there is a i have told you normally the neurons do not remains in direct contact with each other but in electrical synapse this is the this is the pre synaptic neuron means this is the uh, root of the first neuron right and this is the post synaptic neuron means this is the root of the second neuron right between the first and second one there are direct connections there are certain tubulins right these are called gap junctions so electrical synapse the junction between the electrical synapse is not known as gap junction right there are tubulin protein and pipe like structure between them directly sodium ion transfer from one neuron to another neuron. hence what happen the uh, flow of the information is very fast very fast and very quick right so in these junction of uh, which are electrical synapse or gap junction this small protein tubular structure that allow the free movement of ion between neurons they are meant for faster transmission and they are basically found in the brain right so this is the not regular phenomena this is exceptional phenomena or this is a rare rather exceptional this is a rare phenomena which is found in some part of the neuron but normally in normal neuron what they do this normal neuron they uh, forward the uh, information in the form of chemical only so at that point of time in chemical synapse the neurons are not direct in touch with each other between two neurons it means at between the synapse there is a chemical junction where transfer takes place through the chemical in chemical synapse the nerve impulses arrive at the presynaptic node the same thing remember what we discuss in the uh, part of the uh, that one uh, sliding filament theory right so try to understand the information will come at the synaptic node the same thing this it will start absorbing calcium and form ecf extracellular fluid when calcium because of the entry of the calcium synapse these vesicles which are filled with the synaptic vesicles which are filled with the uh, uh, acetylcholine right they will start moving downward when they will move the downward they will come to the downward they will rupture in the pre synapse here the extracellular fluid these uh, this acetylcholine what is the acetylcholine acetylcholine is a type of neurotransmitter it's a type of chemical neurological chemical neurotransmitter it will spread in the here ecf now this will be taken inside by the another neuron with the help of receptor when this will be taken by the receptors which are present at the post synaptic neuron at the surface of post synaptic neuron they will open the sodium channel the sodium channel will open and due to opening of the sodium channel what will happen sodium ion will start gushing in from the uh, uh, this this gap or the synaptic cleft to the another neuron and by this way the transmission of impulse will take place the same thing what i have explained i have explained in the step wise first step nerve impulse arrive at pre synaptic node second step calcium ion enter from the cleft to the node cleft means here from ecf to the node then synaptic vesicle move downward and get rupture this process is called exocytosis neurotransmitter discharge into cleft neurotransmitter discharge over here the trans uh, the the transmit bind with the receptor means this this neurotransmitter will bind with the receptor sodium uh, the sodium ion allowed to enter means the o channel will open and sodium ion allowed to enter in. then the depolarization arrive at the another neuron right that's how the transfer of information takes place in the chemical cell tell me go through with it and tell me if it's clear or not this is the easiest explanation you have to remember all this step all this step you have you have not cram these things you have to just visualize these things you will come to it
क्लियर एलन मेमोनो इज इट क्लियर Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay, right. Very good. Uh, so this is by by the way, this is very important. Electrical synapses have been asked many times. Even chemical synapses. Both of the synapses are important for NEET examination. They have been asked many times. Right. Further, reflex action. It's easy. Uh, it was important for board, but these kind of the easy question you won't get uh, in medical examination. But it's still there a part of this syllabus. Then I'll explain to you. So reflex actions are those actions which are very quick actions, right? Uh, suppose that we are touching any hot object, or you just pull back your hand, right? And you must have seen that uh, uh, you pull back hand first, then you feel the pain. If if your skin get burned, then you will feel the pain. Because when you pull back the hand, the information do not reaches to the brain. When you pull back your hand, then that action taken by the backbone only, pulling back the hand, right? And then after some time, this information reaches to the brain. When this information reaches to the brain, then you feel the brain pain, right? So uh, this is the reflex action. Normally, in reflex action, we do not require participation of the brain, but sometimes brain also participate. Look, uh, riding a bike, right? Uh, driving a car. So for driving car, you do not use your brain. You just keep on changing the gear, steering, clutch, brake, and all that, right? Uh, while uh, typing the anything on the keyboard, you hardly watch over here, right? And while uh, playing the piano, playing the guitar, so all those things which are in the uh, which which are a part of practice, right? They come uh, in our practice, and they are just reflex actions, right? And we call them reflexes. So normally, normally these reflexes do not reach to the brain, but sometimes they do reach to the brain, right? But they are the very quick. So this person is touching very hot object, and heat receptors are present on the skin. Heat receptor will give this information of the hotness to the uh, to a nerve. A particular nerve will take this information from here to the backbone. The nerve which is taking the information, so that will be called afferent process, because it is taking something, right? So it is called afferent process. And normally, I, we have already discussed in the starting of the chapter. I told you that the uh, nerve fiber which take the information, they are called sensory fiber. So these sensory fiber they take the information, they will take to the backbone. In the backbone, there is small part of the neuron that is called relay, right? That relay will take decision over here, right? Brain will not participate. This relay will take decision and give the order. So what will happen? Because if relay will take the decision and the information will not go to the brain, then what will happen? They will save the time of the action time, right? So they will the action time will be very quick. Else, normally information reaches to the backbone. From backbone, it is it goes to the brain. In the brain, there is a particular part will take the decision. From that decision part will give the info order to another part. That order part will give to the information to the motor. Then will come to the effector muscles, and it will take too much time to save the time. What happen here? Information do not goes to the brain. Information go to the relay. Relay is a small part of the neuron that is found in the backbone that will take the decision. Then the order will come back to another nerve that is called motor nerve, and the, this motor nerve is called efferent after efferent process. Because it is giving out, right? That's why it is called efferent process. And then what will happen? It will give order to effector muscles. That muscles will pull back the hand, right? So this pathway is called reflex arc, and these reactions, this this actions are called reflex actions. So uh, reflex action are two type: spinal reflex action, where the where the order come back from a spinal cord only, and the and uh, the cerebral reflex action. In cerebral is reflex action, they are also quick actions. But the information, but the order come from from the brain only, right? Uh, one more reflex action. Suppose that uh, wind is coming, we suddenly uh, shut down our uh, uh, eyelashes, right? Eyelids are uh, shut down, right? So uh, these are the also the uh, reflex action. But these reflex action 
covered by this reflex external are controlled by brain only because the uh, eyes are directly uh, connected with the brain right so this was the reflex clear reflex section and reflex star hope it should be clear it's easy human eye this is important this is very important try to understand first diagram itself because you may get the question from diagram like uh, the question many time question asked from fovea centralis yellow spot right and uh, from uh, this one cornea and from cone cells from rod cells right aqueous humor vitreous humor so these are the structural question which came please try to focus on see this is a human eye human eye is basically made up of three layer the outer coat middle vascular coat and inner nervous coat right the outer most part of the eye do not have any neuron if you if you uh, prickle it with the help of pin you will not feel the pain right and neither blood will come out right because there is no blood vessels in the outer part of the eye look uh the outer most layer this is this outer most layer this outer most layer is called what we call that sclera so outer most layer is called the sclera this one this white color layer you can see this is called sclera it is written over here this is called sclera and the same sclera the extension of sclera is cornea cornea is just a transparent part right and this is called outer coat so sclera and cornea make outer coat then what happened then there is a one more layer this red color layer this is called choroid right inside the choroid there is retina right and choroid you can see this red color structure choroid further extension there is a iris iris work as a shutter like structure right and there are ciliary body ciliary body are the type of muscles with the help of that this lens remains connected right so outside there is so there is a lens you can see this is the lens right and outside of the lens there is a shutter like structure and between this shutter like structure iris there is a pup, pupil so pupil is that hole through which the light can penetrate and reaches to the lens right so what we do when we uh, goes to the very high light intensity suppose that i am sitting inside the room and uh, it's a sunny day when i go outside what i will do i will try to just uh, shrink my eyes right stretch my eyes so what will happen i am not stretching my eye actually i am stretching my iris so that the pupil becomes smaller and the less amount of the light goes right and after few minute adaptation takes place suddenly from a sunny light that uh, intense light when we reaches to a room where a very very uh, small amount of the light is present to us what we do we just stretch out eye eye right so what we do actually we are not stretching out the eye we are stretching out this iris iris will expand the uh, whole size will increase and light will enter from here right so that's what happened between the lens between the lens and this uh, this one between the lens and cornea there is a space where is a liquid and this liquid is called aqueous humor guys please try to understand what i am going to explain you this is aqueous humor right aqueous humor is a liquid which is found in the between the lens and this one cornea this liquid keep on changing right the cornea itself secrete this liquid which is called aqueous humor and this a liquid is drain out with the help of this these this these pores there are two pores and these pores are called canal of ischem canal of ischem take out this liquid and through the blood it is excreted out and continuously this liquid is changing is that clear one more thing. 
cornea this this uh, this cornea part it absorb the oxygen from in water second important is it clear this concept because you will get the question which of the following is correct which of the following is wrong right then ciliary body there are suspensory ligaments with the help of this suspensory ligament this lens remain suspended right suspensory ligament when they stretch when they stretch out the lens lens become thin when they relax the lens become thick right so the thickness of the lens and the shape of the lens is controlled by the ciliary bone or suspensory ligament right then behind it there is a vitreous body or vitreous humor, right this vitreous humor is also another kind of the liquid right but this liquid never change it always remains Built, right as it is the change do not take place here right it maintain the shape of eyeball that question have been asked absorption of oxygen that question have been asked right canal of skin that question have been asked right these all are the question from the structure then uh, there is uh, there is the inner layer this yellow color layer is called retina Retina is basically the place where the formation of image takes place. You all know that, right? Uh, this outer part, that sclera, is a vascular part. It do not have any vascular, uh, uh, like blood supply, right? Innermost layer is retina. Retina have number of the neurons and nerve cells and broad and cone cells, right? And the formation of image takes place here. Inside, next question. Inside the retina. There is a uh, there is a pit like structure or there is a depression, right? This depression is called macula, right? Macula, or it is also called yellow spot. Inside macula, inside this pit, macula, there is a point that is called fovea centrioles. Fovea centrioles is completely made up of cone cells. There is a no rod cell, right? The most distinct vision or the most clear vision is formed at fovea centrioles or yellow spot this is the question asked multiple times is that clear yes sir all the nerves meet at point called optic disc right this is called blind spot yellow spot most clear with distinct vision is formed most clear vision is formed and optic disc where meet that this is called blind spot image formation do not take place at blind spot all the optic nerves come reaches to the hide part of the brain that is the structure of eye so what do you have to remember aqueous humor canal of iscum cornea vitreous humor then macula or fovea centrioles or yellow spot blind spot these are structural questions now outermost coat is made up of sclera and cornea we know that this circle is made up of same kind middle vascular layer so vascular layer means there is a blood supply in the middle part it is called choroid ciliary body and iris innermost part is made up of retina right sclera is the second question which have been asked sclera is white color what is the composition of sclera sclera is means the outermost layer sclera is sclera is a white color structure means white part of the eyeball it is made up of collagen what is the collagen guys what is collagen what is the collagen come on guys don't tell me that you don't do the collagen collagen is a white colored protein right then cornea cornea is one six part of eyeball cornea is i have made the star cornea is avascular that is that is no blood supply blood that is no blood supply so cornea is avascular okay and uh, 
वन ऑफ द मोस्ट ट्रांसपेरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द आई कोरोइड ब्लड वेसल्स एंड पिगमेंट सेल्स आर फाउंड आयरिस आयरिस गिव्स आईज कलर राइट रेटिनल इट इज न्यूरल सेंसरी लेयर रेटिनल लेयर दैट इज न्यूरल सेंसरी लेयर राइट नाउ कम टू द रेटिना try to understand again another part of the question that anatomical part that is the question part right retina is made up of two kind of the cell rod cells and cone cells right rod cells they are meant for vision at night means when the light intensity is low then rod cell help us to see like during morning time during evening time even at the night right is that there is no absence of light light is present over there night the time but those frequencies are present which we cannot detect right so but at the night time rod cell help us to see even you know that if it's dark we can we are some amount of the uh, visibility is uh, uh, over there when we focus that we can find the thing right so uh, rods are responsible for vision at night approximately 120 to 125 million rod cells are found in uh, are i right rod cells have a pigment called rhodopsin rhodopsin is made up of two thing opsin and retinin right a retinin is basically made up of vitamin e that is the question is happening right opsin and retinin then cone cells cone cells there are 6.3 to 6.8 billion cone cells uh they give us vision at the day time they help in color detection uh there are three type of the compound which are found in the cone cell the red color is detected by pyrrhopsin green color iodopsin and blue color cyropsin guys you need to remember all these things whatever written over here these all are question if you have doubt please ask me same thing is below over there but that is not that much important but this part is important you'll get question from this part of tell me the full are clear yes sir aksha diba mamuna yes diba right clear Re remember them by heart right you will get the question from here all they have been opsin have been asked uh, this retinon have been asked that is what is the component that is a vitamin e uh, red pigment pyrrhopsin iodopsin cyanopsin all they have been asked how the vision formation takes place look it's very simple light come from outside it penetrate to cornea we know that is a transparent part then through papill reaches to the lens lens disperse this light and make a uh, uh, like a vision at this point All right in uh, retina part fovea centralis macula right then uh, retina look the retina retina is made up of different layer right you can see the outermost layer it take the what it take the electrical impulses means light impulses convert them into chemical impulses right so there are ganglion cells ganglion cells means there are neuron, neuron cells there are neurons ganglia where multiple neurons meet and not like structure formation that we call ganglia look let me tell you if there are number of the neurons right number of the neurons are there and numbers of neurons are there and this number of neurons they are meeting at a point so that these are the neurons small small neurological cells small small they they are meeting at a particular point this point where this junction this knot where multiple neurons are joining right this part will be called ganglion right it is called ganglion okay. so this is the ganglion right ganglion means multiple neurons are coming and they are giving the information from here it transfer to the another bipolar cell bipolar cell where there are, there is a polarity in the cells right means positive and negative polarity right then what will happen the 
there is a another cell rod cells and then the cone cells right and then what will happen these will be converted these signals will be converted to chemical impulses right then what will happen this component will dissociate uh, suppose that in the daytime there is a rhodopsin then uh, options and retinone will break down and they will convert into chemical uh, uh, impulses then further these chemical impulses will be taken to the brain and brain will be help where brain will help the formation of image actual image right that's how the formation of image takes place let me know if you have any doubt but the formation of images is not important for your board, this medical examination this anatomical part is very important for your medical function most of the question have been asked from there right ask me guys if you have any doubt this is very important part equally the structure of human ear is important you have to understand it patiently like i uh, you need not to uh, get feared of this one it's not that much complex look the mechanism of listening that is not important for your uh, uh, but the anatomical part is important right mechanism part was important for your board exam so this part ear which you call ear this is not ear the ear this is basically pinna right uh, this is designed like this way so that it capture maximum weight right so this is outer ear and uh, this is called pinna part is called pinna uh this canal this pipeline this is called ear canal or auditory mid matrix right so this is ear canal or auditory matrix basically the outer part of the ear it is made up of some elastic cartilages which give it elasticity right and there are some wax gland wax gland secrete sebum right sebum so look the external ear external ear is made up of pinna auditory matrix is this pipeline this outer side is structure this pipeline tympanic membrane there is a membrane like structure all the way goes inside and this membrane like they collide with this membrane this membrane is called tympanum and normally we call it eardrum right tympanum or eardrum right tympanum or eardrum it vibrate right waves the sound wave collide over here and it vibrate here the uh, signals of means uh, the signal which is coming out in the form of the sound they are converted in the form of the vibration right now from here onward there is a uh, middle ear this middle ear is made up of three kind of the bones that right? three type of the bones are there malus incus and stapes stapes is the smallest bone right these all are called ear ossicles malus so from tympanic membrane let me tell you middle ear structure more clear look middle ear this outer this outer part is eardrum vibration will reach to this eardrum when vibration or waves will reach to this eardrum they will give further vibration to the hammer like structure malus malus transfer to the incus incus transfer to the stapes right so that's how the transfer of information takes now after that this part was the middle ear the extra sound or extra vibration will be leak out or uh, removed if, with the help of eustachian tube right this eustachian tube is also responsible for maintaining the prayer pressure right from here to here it maintain the ear pressure and it remains connected with the mouth right so there are two things first it remove the extra sound and second it maintain the pressure then this inner part this inner part remains floating in a fluid right this inner complete part is called cochlea right cochlea is is closed inside a bony structure and it remains keep on floating in the fluid right now come to the inner part inner part keep on floating 
in perilymph right this fluid is called perilymph remember this perilymph what is perilymph this is cerebrospinal fluid nothing else but cerebrospinal fluid the same fluid which was in the meninges or the brain membrane right then membrane labrum this organ this organ is made up of this cochlea is made up of this is uh, cochlea is made up of pipeline like structure membrane system here there are three folded pipeline superior semicircular canal posterior semicircular canal lateral semicircular so there are three semicircular canal and this this part this part is called cochlea right then vibration reaches to the semicircular canal and finally vibration reaches to the cochlea cochlea have the inner part of the cochlea have some hair like structure it have some this kind of hair like structure. there are some hair like structure here inner part have some hair like structure these hair like structure this one these hair like structure they receive the information and further this information is taken back by the taken by the the different kind of the nerves and it is transferred to the brain from here information reaches to the brain that's how we listen right? and this is the basically listening process tell me Go through with this structure and tell me if you have any doubt. I will again explain. So, so is mechanism of hearing important? Uh, that is not important, but I'll tell you. That is not important. Mechanism of vision, mechanism of hearing, that is not important. From eye and ear, you will see in the previous year question paper. From eye and ear, the, all the questions are from anatomical part. Anat anatomical part, the function of those anatomical. Mechanism of listening was important, not even visit. Mechanism of listening was important for your board examination. Normally, board paper it is asked as a long answer. Is that clear or complex? You have to go to the PPT many times. Then it will become easy. It's easy, by the way. Clear? Should we go ahead? Alan? Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. So this is the mechanism of hearing. Uh, this diagram I have made by myself. Right. So I'll explain and it's easy. By the way, uh, this is not important for uh, your uh, this examination. Look, uh, this is schematic diagram. Sound wave will come. This sound will, uh, will this is external layer. This is tympanic membrane. Collide, it will transfer to the malus. Malus will transfer to the incus. Incus will transfer to the stapes. This is stapes. Stapes will vibrate. And from here, the internal ear start. This complete part is internal ear, right? It's cochlear part. Then the, uh, the vibration will go to the, this pipe is called scala vestibuli. Scala vestibuli have a membrane, this membrane, lower membrane. You can see this lower membrane. I have made the arrow. So this is this membrane is called resonor's membrane. Resonor membrane will vibrate. Inside the resonor membrane, there is means below the resonor membrane, there is another pipeline called scala media. This scala media will receive these vibrations. Scala media have a small hair-like structure. We are called organ of corti. Organ of corti are basically sensory hair, sensory hair. You have to remember the name organ of cartai are sensory hair right they will receive the sense of this vibration and they will transfer they will collect all these vibration and transfer in the form of nerve impulse to the brain and brain will understand what a person is saying right then the extra sound will leak out from here this one 
electric loop. This one through the Eustachian tube loop, right? Right. And the lower one is scala tympani. So upper one is scala vestibuli, and this is scala vest uh, media and scala tympani. There are three pipelines. So finally, the organ of parti, which are made up of sensory hair, they are responsible for receiving the sense of the vibration or sound. Go through with the mechanism. The arrow shows the uh, direction of the sound waves. This mechanical waves. And this is the last topic for the nervous system. Go through with your NCRT. Uh, uh, like, uh, I will look at your NCRT, go through with this chapter, and ask me if you have any doubt. Confirm me after going through with you with these chapters. Done? Should we go ahead? Yes. Okay. So now we are going to start with the last chapter of the animal physiology part, means human physiology part. That is the uh, chemical coordination, right? So let's start with the chemical coordination. Chemical coordination is, yes, you need to understand. I'll tell you uh, where you have to focus more in chemical coordination. As there are a number of the glands, but you have to focus on the some glands, which are really very important. Human system or endocrine plan. Right. So here we will study the types of gland and what they are secreting. This is also equally important. So in nervous system, what you have to remember, parts of brain, eyes and ear, these parts, then the uh, that uh, synapse part. This is very, very important. Here I will tell you there are some glands which are frequently asked. Frequently asked. So uh, glands may be of two types, exocrine gland and endocrine. Exocrine glands are those which secrete basically enzyme and they are called the gland with duct. They are called duct gland. Duct means pipe, right? means tube, right? Look, for example, uh, the liver is exocrine gland, right? This is a picture of liver. So, liver is exocrine. Why it is exocrine gland? Because liver have a uh, liver have a pipe. This pipe is called bile duct, is bile pipe. Bile duct directly secrete its secretion into the small intestine. 
right direct secretion right so it secrete its secretion means basically the enzyme it secretes its secretion through the duct only so that's why we call them the gland with the duct right so these are the exocrine now come to the endocrine endocrine glands are called ductless glands they do not have any this kind of the pipe or duct then what they do they secrete the hormone how the hormones are secreted hormones are secreted directly into the blood for example the hormone secreted by the blood and it have to work on the heart so what will happen the hormone remain uh, uh, remain uh, flowing uh, here and there with the uh, through the blood uh, with the blood flow and when it will reach to the heart then only it will go right so they always hormones are those chemical which always secreted from some other places but they always work on their target organ they do not work anywhere else right further the glands have been divided endocrine glands have been divided in two types right <coughs> holocrine gland and heterocrine gland that question have been asked what are the holocrine gland and what are the heterocrine holocrine gland like pituitary they secrete only hormone they do not have any other function they are simple function they have just one function they have to secrete the hormone that's it so for example pituitary gland it is a holocrine gland it secrete only hormone then there is a heterocrine gland heterocrine gland they secrete the hormone but they have other function as well what are the other function for example pancreas and ovary both are the example of heterocrine gland means they secrete the hormone but other than hormone they have also other functions what are the functions pancreas secrete hormone but at the same time it also secrete the enzyme why pancreas secrete the insulin but at the same time you know that they, it secrete the pancreatic juice which are responsible for digestion in the stomach right so I have two two facts ovary ovary secrete the hormone estrogen progesterone and all that but in the same time it release the egg as well right it release egg so production of egg also takes place release egg that's why this is called heterocrine right william m bellis and arnest sterling were the people who discovered the hormone hope it should be clear heterocrine and holocrine gland location of endocrine gland is also important sometimes they do ask about the location right? this position there where they are situated so there are three gland which are situated in our brain part only we have discussed them in the brain only but here we will also discuss them again hypothalamus you know here and we know that hypothalamus is known as what we call this thermostat why thermostat why because it control the temperature of our brain then pineal gland pituitary gland remember their position then thyroid gland and along with thyroid in the same there there are parathyroid gland they are found back side of thyroid so thyroid and parathyroid then thymus gland it is found the position of thyroid and thymus gland have been asked that's why i am saying that you need to remember the position as well then the sixth number is thymus gland and then the seventh number is adrenal gland found at the top of the kidney then after adrenal gland kidney then pancreas then testis then ovary right come to the hypothalamus gland. look this is hypothalamus gland right hypothalamus gland do not secrete any enzyme itself basically the enzyme which are made in hypothalamus gland they are secreted by posterior part of the pituitary this is posterior lobe of pituitary pituitary gland 
right so that concept you have to remember that fact you have to remember hypothalamus do not secrete its own enzyme right and uh, what is the function of hypothalamus it secretes some manufacture some enzyme but the enzyme of hypothalamus are secreted by the pituitary only posterior part of the pituitary right now try to understand uh there is a relationship you can see from here till this point this is till this point right till this point this is the hypothalamus gland and below this point there is a pituitary gland right both have a relationship actually hypothalamus is a secretory and pituitary is the master pituitary is the king why and they work in the uh, uh, this one feedback mechanism try to understand if there is more sugar in blood so who will control the sugar pancreas will control the sugar who is going to control it? pancreas will control the sugar what will happen pancreas have to secrete the insulin to control the sugar so first if the sugar level will increase hypothalamus will come to know that sugar have increased in the blood hypothalamus will ask pituitary gland that sugar have increased in the blood order to pancreas to release insulin hypothalamus will suggest to pituitary pituitary will order to the pancreas pancreas will release the insulin and sugar will be controlled now pancreas is controlling sugar controlling sugar after some time sugar is controlled now if insulin will keep on secreting what will happen the sugar level will decrease now this is the time to switch off the pancreas who will switch off again the feedback will be taken by hypothalamus hypothalamus will take the feedback from the body and come to know that sugar is decreasing again it will suggest to the pituitary that ask pancreas to stop that then pituitary will order and pituitary will order to pancreas and pancreas will stop the secretion of insulin so hypothalamus work on the feedback mechanism this is feedback mechanism. is it clear or not tell me clear for telling me yes or no clear or not yes. yes sir very good so first thing what is the feedback mechanism you came to know now i'll start it is called control center of supreme commander why supreme commander is pituitary and it is controlling pituitary so called control center of supreme commander it secrete neuro hormone corticotropin releasing hormone thyrotropin releasing hormone growth hormone releasing hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone prolactin releasing hormone prolactin inhibiting inhibiting means stop prolactin inhibiting is hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone melanocyte inhibiting hormone that's it this is all secreted by this one right pituitary now this was the hypothalamus you need not to remember all the hormones the name of all the hormones guys just you have to remember whatever whatever i am focusing right where i am pinpointing right those things you have to remember only don't take extra pain just uh, focus or hit at the point pituitary gland now pituitary gland have two part anterior and posterior part right look anterior part of pituitary gland is this part the anterior lobe anterior lobe it is secreting growth hormone and somatotropin somatotropin hormone that you need to remember i will take that growth hormone or somatotropin hormone tsh thyrotropin stimulating hormone or thyroxin acth adrenocorticotropic hormone prolactin hormone gonadotropin hormone that you need to remember right prolactin or releasing hormone so the gonadotropin trapping means which are responsible for development of the gonads means testis and ovary so it released two hormone fsh and lh follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone 
we have studied in the human reproduction model responsible for follicle development of follicle and luteinizing hormone responsible for uh, and this is the androgen responsible for release of the egg and all that right? hormone of intermediate group this hormone is called melanotropin hormone or melanocyte stimulating hormone melanotropin hormone it is responsible for color of our body color of our skin right because it is responsible for senses of melanin and all that then the third part is hormones of posterior lobe pituitary right pituitary is a hormone which is secreted by posterior lobe then oxytocin important oxytocin this is the milk ejecting hormone in the female we have discussed in the human reproduction part contraction of uterine muscle we have discussed during it help during partitions vasopressin anti diuretic hormone right or adh right vasopressin or adh anti diuretic hormone that is it reduces the uh, reduces the rate of urine formation right that's the vasopressin hormone or adh both are the same thing finally the third gland is called pineal gland it is also called epiphysis pineal gland is 0.1 to 0.2 g in the size uh it is responsible for secretion of melatonin hormone melatonin is called sleeping hormone and this pineal gland is also responsible for biological clock look pineal gland is light sensitive why it is light light sensitive pineal gland will work only in the absence of light right so uh, that's why we require the uh, we, we need to close our eyes before we sleep if you will open you keep on open your eyes you cannot sleep with the open eyes why if the eyes will open the light will keep on going inside your brain is inside your eyes and the melano uh, this melatonin will not be secreted right so it is light sensitive right it secrete or more in absence of light as you will close the as you will close the eyes the light will stop going inside the eyes then it will secrete melatonin hormone and when the melatonin secretion will start you will sleep those people who are who, sleep, who feel more sleepy they are a hyper secretion of the melatonin and those which less sleeping the less secretion of melatonin is that clear tell me guys and ask me if you have any doubt tell me did you got it yes no or if you have any doubt tell me. i have ticked the hormone where which you need to remember melatonin is very important what important very important pineal gland itself very important clear yes sir yes okay uh then thyroid gland very 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 important most of the question which have been asked from here right easy it's very easy what is t3 what is t4 what is thyrocalcitonin what is their function and all that right so this is the at the neck part the thyroid gland is uh 
thyroid gland this is the sphincter structure of thyroid gland thyroid gland is made up of two kind of these structures thyroid follicle means a follicle means a bubble like structure thyroid follicle and c cells c cells secrete thyrocalcitonin right so c cells are responsible for secretion of thyrocalcitonin but these thyroid uh, follicles remains filled with the t3 and t4 collectively t3 and t4 collectively known as thyroxin right so collectively we call t3 and t4 thyroxin this t3 and t4 which are collectively called thyroxin t3 is triiodothyronin and t4 is tetraiodothyronin first thing the question uh, have been asked that if there is a deficiency of the thyroid uh, iodine what will happen formation of thyroid will reduce and a disease which is called goiter that will cause clear yes sir. if thyroxine hormone is not there the frog will not metamorphose what does it mean it means the formation of means uh, Uh, what is the thyroxine? That is a combination of T3 and T4, triiodothyronine and tetraiodothyronine. Look. Metabolic rate of body, uh, they increase the, what is the function? Thyroxine. Metabolic rate of the body, protein senses, they help for the mental development, heat production, and maintain the body temperature, right? uh they they uh, they are responsible for secretion of or formation of neurotransmitter right thyrocalcin calcitonin it lower the calcium level in the blood if the calcium level increase they will they will lower the calcium level they will deposit it into bone suppressing the release of the calcium from the bone means they will suppress the release of the calcium from bone and they will deposit more calcium on the bone Hyperthyroidism. Right. What is the hyperthyroidism? Hyperthyroidism uh, means more secretion of thyroid. What what it will cause? It will cause an exophthalmic goiter or grave disease. What is exophthalmic goiter? Uh, protrusion of eyeball you must have seen some people uh, their eyeball are out of their body right so it, it seems that they are gazing you right so this is called exophthalmic goiter or grave disease remember the name of the disease right and high hyperthyroidism is more secretion of thyroidism will causes exophthalmic goiter and grave disease this is very important multiple times this question have been asked so why it takes place that's what you have to tell or which of the following is because of hyperthyroidism, right? So, exophthalmia means protrusion of eyeball. Then, hypothyroidism means less secretion of thyroid. If there is a less secretion of thyroid, what will happen? It will call it cretinism. Cretinism means the infant, it will basically, it will, uh, these all are very important. Cretinism. Cretinism is caused due to hypothyroidism. Infant with slow body growth. It reduces the metabolic rate. It's stunned means short growth, pigeon chest, and retarded sexual development. That is called cretinism. It will cause by because this hormone is directly related with the growth, right? That's why it is also called growth hormone. Then simple goiter. Simple goiter, I have told you that by the deficiency of iodine, thyroid, uh, thyroid gland enlarges and this uh, neck part, right? part get swelling clear is it clear
Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now come to the look parathyroid. Parathyroid glands are found in this red color gland is the thyroid gland. This parathyroid, this yellow color spots are the parathyroid gland. Actually, parathyroid glands are found in the back side of the thyroid gland. Right. Now try to understand. This, uh, this, uh, this is made up of two kinds of the cell: cheap cell and oxyphil cell. The function of oxyphil cell nobody knows, but the cheap cells are responsible for secretion of parathyroid or parathyroid hormone, PTH, or this is also known as the collips hormone after its discovery, right? Collips hormone. Remember the name collips hormone, right? It is also called collips hormone, right? Then, calcium and phosphate uh, between blood and that, that it maintain the balance of calcium and phosphate between blood and their tissues, right? Responsible for calcium reabsorption from nephron. We have studied this thing, right? in urine formation part inhibit the phosphate reabsorption from the kidney and the release of the calcium look calcitonin is responsible for suppressing the release of the calcium its function is opposite to the calcitonin right it is responsible for release of the calcium parathyroid disorder hypoparathyroidism it lowers it, it is lowering the of the blood calcium level decreases the blood calcium level parathyroid titany it causes parathyroid titany it's a short of titany right or hypocalcemic titany remember these both of them hyper more secretion softening of bones and bending of bones osteoporosis and kidney stone so hypo and hyper parathyroid this was the parathyroid go through with it Clear? Yes, sir. Thymus gland. Thymus gland. Uh, most of the scientists consider that this gland is responsible for aging. The question I've been asked, which gland, which gland, uh, which gland of the body uh, have different size at the different uh, age and it disappears finally. The name answer was thymus gland. Actually, at the time of the birth, is tend to it is its size is ten to fifteen grams. At the age of puberty, means uh, uh, thirty to forty, uh, uh, it becomes thirty. Sorry, at the age of puberty, it becomes thirty to forty gram. At the mid adult age, it is ten gram, and it disappears at the old age. Scientists think that this is the gland which is responsible for aging. Basically, it releases the thymosin, right, which is responsible for WBC development. Means its main function, it is responsible for the maintenance of immune system. It maintains the maintain immunity of body. Immunity of body. So remember that. It's very simple. And its location have been asked, right? Where where is the look where it is found, right? So these two kind of the questions have been asked from this kind, right? Gland. Come to adrenal gland. This is a bit complex and important. Look, 
this is adrenal gland which is found at the top of the kidney right uh adrenal gland is made up of two layer adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla so this part this inner part core part is called adrenal medulla and this outer part is called adrenal cortex it is made up of two parts right adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla and the outermost layer is called capsule uh adrenal cortex have further three layer zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata and zona reticularis right there are three layer the cortex part right this is this outer part so zona glomerulosa it uh, its outermost layer it releases mineralocorticoid means it maintain the balance of mineral right for example aldosterone and cortisone okay then then another layer is zona fasciculata middle layer it releases glucocorticoid means maintain the balance of glucose cortisone and cortisol and cortisone right these hormones responsible for liver to synthesize the carbohydrate increase the glucose in blood increase the amino acid in the blood increase glucose in blood this is important i have made the star it have anti insulin effect look this is responsible for increasing the glucose level in the blood and the function of insulin to reduce the glucose level in the blood that's why it have anti insulin effect you have to remember the name right that glucocorticoid is anti have anti insulin effect immuno suppressive mean is suppress the immune system increases the rbc and decreases the wbc level and it is also known as the stress hormone they all are question and very important remember that all are question and very important all points are very important zona reticularis it also secrete androgen testosterone and progesterone they are sex hormone male androgens are uh, they are androgens like testosterone female uh, female androgen male androgen that is testosterone female androgen that is estrogen disease diseases are also important addisons disease deficiency of mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid causes tuberculosis low blood sugar increased sodium in urine this disease is called addison disease important adrenal virilism excess of androgen in female called adrenal adrenal virilism it's not that much important gynecomastia excess of estrogen when excess of estrogen is secreted in male like hence the mammary gland mammary gland development takes place in male development takes place in male that is called gynecomastia right now the inner core part adrenal medulla it secrete nor uh, nor epinephrine and nor adrenal or both are the same thing yeah, either you call it nor epinephrine or nor adrenal that control the blood pressure epinephrine and adrenaline that that is called emergency hormone and it control the cardiovascular activity means control the heart right so adrenaline or epinephrine control the heart and nor epinephrine or nor adrenaline that control the blood right it is secreted by adrenal go through with it and tell me is it clear or not
क्लियर Come to pancreas. Look, uh, in this diagram, you will you can see the diagram of the spleen. You will never form like hardly you will find the spleen diagram. I have never seen this diagram in any any book. The spleen is called blood bank or graveyard of RBC. By the way, it have nothing to do with the endocrine system. But I have just put this diagram to show you the, the position of spleen, uh, which is the graveyard of RBC, right? and uh, there are uh, this is this part is pancreas. Pancreas, as we know, this is this is a heterotrophic gland. It secretes enzyme as well as hormone. So there are pancreatic isolates, isolate of Langerhans. These are responsible for secretion of insulin hormone, right? And rest there are pancreatic isolates. They are responsible for secretion of uh, uh, hormone part, right? And this isolate, pancreatic isolates, they are isolate, uh, also called isolates of Langerhans. They have three kinds of cells. Delta cell, alpha cell, and beta cell. Delta cell secrete the somatostatin. Alpha cell secrete glucagon. And beta cell secrete insulin. Right? And acne cell, uh, they are responsible for digestive system. Right? So basically, pancreatic isolate of Langerhans and pancreatic isolate, they secrete somatostatin, glucagon, and insulin. Right. So these are the three hormones which are secreted by this one. Right. Uh, look. Glucagon, it converts glucose into, it converts glycogen into glucose. Glycogen into glucose. Right. So it increases glucose level. Insulin, it converts glucose into glycogen somatostatin this hormone is responsible for some other activities right it increases the uh, uh, this is responsible for energy generation and all other other activities right basically these hormones are responsible for glucagon and insulin they are major hormones so look uh, hyperglycemia or diabetes or diabetes mellitus, the normal diabetes which we called that this is sugar or this is hyperglycemia or diabetes mellitus. It is, it takes place, this is very, very important. It takes place because of insufficient insulin secretion and uh, healing power is impaired. Hypoglycemia is low sugar. This is more dangerous than hyperglycemia. Blood glucose level fall due to excess of insulin or deficiency of glucagon. This is, these both have been important. So what I've studied, it's a growth. It have to return with the growth, it's growth form. Tell me. Is that clear, Ellen? Safla? Yes, sir. Uh, basically, this sim it's simple. So, testis, testis, we know that we have studied in detail that how this sperm formation takes place. And uh, leading cells, interstitial cells, they secrete the end androgen called testosterone. We know that and we have discussed that thing in detail. So, need not to go for that. Just testosterone for that. Ovary, we know that ovary secrete the hormone oestrogen from graphene follicle, progesterone from carpus luteum, relaxin from carpus luteum, inhibin and actin that, that secrete uh, that FSH and GNS. So, inhibin means that inhibit and actin that activate FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, right? 
they inhibit or activate the FSH follicular stimulating hormone and gonadotropin releasing hormone. Right. So these are the hormones which are secreted. And what is the function of estrogen, progesterone, relaxin? We all have studied in detail in human physiology part means human reproduction part that we have done already. How the hormone action is done? Let's discuss one thing. So basically, the steroids hormone, they enter inside the cell and from cell, uh, inside the cell, in protoplasm, there are certain receptors. They bind with the receptor and with the help of receptor, they, they reaches inside the nucleus. This is the nuclear envelope. They reaches inside the nucleus. When they reach inside the nucleus, they adhere with the DNA, right? And when they adhere with the DNA, they start the, uh, this hormone complex, they start the transcription, means formation of mRNA. mRNA will come out of the nucleus, right? Then after coming out the nucleus, it will start the translation. After translation, it will make the desired protein, right? And that protein will perform the function. And that's how the hormone action is done, right? And this is all about the animal human physiology or hormones as well. Means chemical coordination. This chapter is also done. Go through with this chapter and tell me if you have any doubt regarding any of the hormone, any of the gland, or anything else. Tell me. Is that done? Yes, sir. Okay, so we have completed complete human physiology part, all the